Hello once again, fellow Jetty users. Welcome back to my workshop. Where this looks a bit ominous, doesn't it? That's not a Jetty transmitter. Uh, what we're going to do in this video is pick up on quite a few requests I've had, which is to show how to make the sensors that are shown on the rc-thoughts.com website for use with your Jetty radio system. And I've checked with the owner of the website Tero Salmanen, and he's quite okay with me doing this, so let's get on with it. Uh, what do you need? Well, first of all, you go to rc-thoughts.com and look in sensors, and uh, from the menu select the DIY sensor FAQ, which tells you quite a bit there about what to do, and there is a nice video in there from Tero himself. Uh, which goes into some of the details of the bits you have to download, etc. And uh, rather than repeat what Tero has already done, because it can get quite a bit involved, I'll just skip over those and let you watch Tero's own video about various things. Um, what else do you need from his website? Again, from the sensors menu, you get uh, the firmware uploader which you put onto your PC and will allow you to put the software onto the little sensor that you're building. And you need the sensor itself. Now what I'm going to demonstrate is the CDI RPM sensor because it is far and away the simplest of them. And this plugs into the RPM lead from your electronic ignition, such as the RCXL, I don't know which other ones it would work with, but it does seem to work nicely with the RCXL electronic ignition for your uh, petrol engine. And the other lead plugs into your receiver, and lo and behold, you get uh, RPM readout on your transmitter, which you can put up in displayed telemetry and do whatever you want with. Okay, the reason I've chosen this one, I said it's the simplest, is because there's only one little board involved, not two items. So, what do we need? Well, uh, we need the Arduino board. I say there's plenty about uh, getting hold of these on Tero's website. I just followed his links or updated ones and uh, certainly before all the coronavirus problems, got them direct from China uh, stupidly cheaply. Um, I always ordered more than I needed because if you ordered, let's say, one and it was faulty, you wouldn't know it and you'd get very frustrated trying to get it to work. So I order, always ordered plenty of them. They are dirt cheap, so there's no hassle in ordering plenty of them. And they come with these little connector pins. What else do we need? Well, as you can see, we're going to need uh, the board and the resistor, 2.4 kilo ohm or thereabouts, and a couple of leads, a male and a female. There's a packet of resistors. Uh, these have to be 2.2 kilo ohms, close enough to 2.4, dirt cheap again off eBay. And the simplest way to get a male and a female lead is just to take an existing uh, extension lead and cut it. What else do we need? Well, we need one of these special leads. It's a USB to TTL. It's a four pin TTL. And this is what allows us to load the software from Tero's website onto the little Arduino processor board to tell it what it's actually supposed to be doing. Um, and you can read up on Tero's website about getting hold of these and fixing any problems. This is about the third one I've had. Um, they can be tricky because um, even major suppliers like RS Components in the UK don't seem to do the four pin one. And I found a four pin one on Farnell, another big UK supplier, but it said on its website, not suitable for reprogramming Arduino boards, which is a bit strange. The big problem is that uh, it's not simply wired through. There is a little processor chip in here. It's proprietary. And guess what? Most of the leads you can find seem to have counterfeits on them. But the proprietary brand that makes the, the true chip uh, also makes the drivers that you need on your PC for it. And they keep rewriting and updating the drivers to try and spot the fakes and counterfeits so that it will not work with them. And so the lead I had 
for a while, worked and then stopped working. And then I got another one which wouldn't work at all, even though they were bought from what was at the time, now defunct, a uh, major UK high street uh, electronics shop. Um, what else will you need? Some heat shrink, just to wrap the thing in when you've finished with it. Okie doke. Uh, so I'm not going to bore you showing you soldering the various bits and pieces. What other things will we need then? Well, good wire cutter. I can uh, cut my wire and I can snip the ends of the resistors off once they're soldered in. Got my wire stripper just to bear the ends and a little 25 watt soldering iron. Okay, man, out you come with a, a reasonably fine tip on it and some solder just to help me along. I've got the helping hands, usual little thing with a magnifier. And there's one other thing you might uh, like because these Arduino boards, as you can see from my finger, are very small, tiny little holes, very fiddly to use. And let's face it, most uh, model flyers, people who would be doing this, are people of a certain maturity people of refinement and taste, people with uh, reducing eyesight. Not so easy to see what you're doing with these fiddly little things anymore. And so you might find it handy to have a gadget I got at the Midlands Model Engineering Show a few years ago from major UK supplier of such lamps. Uh, one of these things, it clamps to your workbench, got a nice flexible neck on it. Up here, open the window, there's a magnifying glass and it's got a big ring of LED lights which I can switch on like that and you can look through there and get up close to things and see what you're doing. Should that be of any help to you? I don't quite need it for this yet but uh, I think my eyes are not too far away from it. So uh, finally before I start picking that up and soldering things to it I am going to ground myself in case I've built up any static charge. I don't want to zap the electronics. So I go to my uh, power box here, which I know is because it's metal, it's earthed. I saw the electrician do it. Touching that, I've earthed myself. I am safe to go. So I shall chop that cable, strip the ends. I will solder it in. Oops. The way it's shown here, I'll put in my little 2.4K resistor and I'll come back when I've done that. Okay, I've soldered up the board, I've got the leads on it, there's a little resistor on the back and that has reminded me of something because I haven't done this for quite a while. Um, first of all, the holes are incredibly close together and they're very small. So, of course, you want to twist the copper wire tightly together to get it through the hole. But if you've got fairly chunky servo cable, chances are some of those very fine individual copper strands will get pushed back as you try and push the wire through the hole. They are incredibly fine. You may not notice it, but they are now floating around loose at the back, as it were still connected to the cable, but they could short on the pin next to them. Also, um, this was a lead bought at a show some years ago and reminded me of what junk they are. It just went near it with um, the soldering iron and the insulation melted away at the back, leaving a big exposed wire. And that reminded me why, uh, in general now, I tend to only buy, and even for these, use Powerbox Premium Servo Cable. Nice fine wire that goes through the hole without uh, little tiny filaments um, coming loose at the back. And the insulation doesn't just melt away if you breathe, even so much as breathe on it. Anyway, so that's thoughts done. So there we are. That's all the soldering we require for this one. The leads are on. And now we need to program it. So I've got my uh, USB to TTL cable. I have cut four pin part off there and plugged it in as per the diagram on the FEQ page here. Uh, notice that it does tell you here what the pins on the board are, the TXO, RX1, 
BCC and ground, and that corresponds to, if we can see it, the pin holes there up at the end. And so, watch the video on rcthoughts.com, and he shows you how to hold the pins in and how to get the necessary piece of software for loading it, how to get your uh, uh, necessary software for the sensor down into it. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention earlier on. Why is this the simplest sensor of all? Because uh, the sensors require two parts. There's an actual sensor which senses the thing you're trying to get, like a little GPS receiver, um, a G meter, an ammeter, voltmeter, that kind of thing, and the Arduino board, which actually does all the processing and conversion of the signal from the sensor into something that Jetty recognizes. And this is what we're going to put the software on. Now, why do we not have the second part, a sensor here? Well, it's already been done in the RCXL ignition unit by providing an RPM lead. It's obviously providing some sort of data output. So in a sense, ignition unit is the sensor. So we only need the board here. And rather than having to solder a GPS receiver, ammeter, whatever, onto the board here, of course, we just solder in a lead, which will plug into the RCXL. OK, so I'm going to go ahead now and do what Tero shows in his uh, video, which is I will hold the board push that in. I will have the software loaded uh, for the CDI sensor onto here. I'll tell it to send and it should hopefully, once finished, change from ready to upload to successfully uploaded. Okay, I'll be back in a second. Now the reason I'm having to put this down, by the way, is because I don't have four hands to hold the camera, operate the computer, hold the plugs and the board. So I'll be back in a moment. Uh, I'm back and that went successfully. As you can see, I've Got it in there. I'm not having to hold it together, as Tero shows in his video, because it's managed to uh, plug itself in quite nicely. As soon as you plug it in, the green little light comes on because we're plugged into the laptop. Uh, I'll just show you here. Uh, I'm not going to go right through it, but Tero shows how you just from press this button and go onto your PC to choose the sensor that you're installing, and you got that uh, from... The relevant page you get the software uh, then I pressed scan so the computer would find the USB to TTL lead that gave it a moment opened up com port and it offered me com port 6 that was the only one it offered so I chose that I then pressed upload pressed the little button and released it on here so that it knew to do it waited a moment it said it was uploading and then it changed to upload successful so we should now have a working beast. All that's left to do is put the heat shrink around it, heat it down with the, the heat gun, get it down, and then we'll plug it in and see what happens. OK, back in another moment. OK, let's plug it in and see if the transmitter will see it. Here, I put the heat shrink around it, as you can see from this, how small it is. I've got my receiver bound to a model memory. We're going to plug it into the EXT port because these are like the old fashioned jetty sensors. They're not X bus. Uh, so it won't show up in Device Explorer. It will appear in Jetty Box. Uh, but there's nothing to program in this one. So uh, although Jetty Box says it's there, there's no need to program it. But if you have things like the GPS sensor, then you go into Jetty Box and there are all sorts of settings there that you can uh, set up, mess about with. Same with the other sensors, but we won't have any need to with this one. Nice and easy. So let's see if it'll work. Let's go to our model. We'll go into timers and sensors. Sense, no, no not display telemetry. Sensors logging setup. I shall plug the uh, sensor into the EXT port and let's see if the system finds it. Plugged in. 
Look at that. Lovely. It's found the RC Thoughts CDI sensor. You can change the name if you want, whatever. And it only has one output, which is RPM. And of course, Jetty defaults to logging it, i.e. recording it, if we set recording running. So we'll be quite happy with that. Lovely. What can we do with it? Well, we can display it on the front screen. Add telemetry. There we go. Don't need double size. Say OK. Bingo. There you have. Um, now, you don't want to be looking down at that during a flight, do you? So can we hear it? Back into uh, timer sensors. Voice output. We'll choose a trigger switch. I'll choose that one. Spring loaded switch. Does it show in sensors and variables? There we are. So set it to run on the trigger switch. Priority, I can leave it as low because I'm not using anything else, but high, medium, low would just give you the sequence in which they're read out. Okay, to that. Lovely, now if I pull this, will it tell me the RPM? Zero. Okay, it's just reading out a number, but uh, hopefully you'll know that it's the RPM that you've set to this, or if you've set a few other variables, Jetty tends to tell you what they are, so you'll hopefully know that the if it says 2,500, you'd realise that is the RPM. Lovely, that's working. All we need to do now is put it in a model, plug the other lead into the lead labelled RPM that comes out of the RCXL box, and see if it actually gives us a reading. Uh, all's looking good so far, so hopefully this one will work. I only have one uh, model with a petrol engine with such a unit, uh, which you can see if you look at my video about uh, setting up a model from scratch, uh, a standard sort of power petrol model. I use uh, a decent sized model of a Robin uh, 2200 series with a DLE 40 in it. It's got the RCXL ignition unit. And in that model, in that video, I show the RPM sensor, exactly the same as the one I've just built, and it certainly does the job. So there you go. Um, yes, you've got to have a look at Tero's website, the rc-thoughts.com, and watch his video. Uh, you've got to get yourself the components and the special USB to TTL lead. But if you want to have a go, um, it's just, once you've done the first one, you realise how straightforward it is. Making them is just a little bit of fiddly soldering, especially if you're trying to um, solder on a sensor like the GPS or the um, ammeter, voltmeter, etc. Uh, once you've got it going, it's all straightforward. A little bit of fiddly soldering, and there you go. It's a pity Jetty doesn't actually make one of these CDI sensors. They make RPM sensors, but they are reading the the prop by optical reading or the shaft by a magnetic hall sensor. Um, so if you make one of these, you're not doing Jetty out of anything because you're reading it straight off the ignition unit and Jetty doesn't make this sensor. So I hope that one's been of help. Uh, that's showing you the bulk of what needs to be done along with the video on the rc-thoughts.com website. If you want to make any of the more complicated ones, all you need is the additional sensor like the GPS unit and a little bit more soldering to wire it up. And there you go.